I was looking at the clouds and noticed that. We are two crazies from South Africa. This is Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now full-time living and sailing on our new home, Sisu. Our highest northern latitude, 41 degrees 16 minutes. So that was the highest point that we will go. So it's a beautiful morning. No wind. Absolutely no wind. Um, we had the early, very early swimming between the de jellyfish. <laughs> but we decided we will start the engine. We have no real hard schedule, but we will start the engine because we are busy cooking. And for that, I don't think the battery is going to last for five hours. So let us start going. A couple of huge swells coming through here. It looks very quiet and calm. But look at that every now and then. So somewhere there must be a big wind. So we mark our reef lines. So this is the main halyard and this means two white lines. So it is then reef two. And Petru is busy with the others. I'm using my surgical needle because it's got the biggest little eye otherwise I don't get the whipping twine through the eye because it's like all sticky with the UV stuff so I battle so now to get this angle into a straight thing is a bit of a problem Black Sea. I did not find a Black Sea. I think between Bosphorus and Cape Con was alright, but it was the town was not that. No, the, the coastline was very pretty. The coastline is very nice, very, very beautiful. Yeah, that's definitely so. The first anchorage. Now this uh, the the anchorage is, is very far between and the swells is the the prevailing wind is from the north or northeast kind of thing so although you might be protected from the from the wind you're not really protected from the, the swells. swells so it's, yeah, it's like all open anchorages there's no little yeah I'd wipe like the rest of the eastern side of the Turkish coast another avatar background <laughs> It's just so cool. Looks like it's man-made, but it's perfect. Again, okay, look at this rock formations. It's just so awesome. Okay, so this is, but um, I think that we can highlight this gun was was a town that you can actually go into town. The anchorage allowed that. We arrived here at Kef Ken. Yeah, Kef Ken. Kef Ken. K E F K E N. Kef Ken. And we decided we want to see whether we can get to shore and see what's happening. And Sisu is nice and centered in this little bay, we hope. <laughs> um, but we need to go that away to the little harbour. But we're going to check out the scene first. Come on. All okay? <laughs> so, this will be our first time stepping off Sisu in the Black Sea. Little blue and red boats, it reminds me of 
Walfus Bay, Namibia, South Africa, they also had these boats. And in the Canaries, they also had these boats at hmm, Yero, where they caught all the tunas. They also had little boats like this. Okay, we managed to find a kind of like a dinghy dock. <laughs> Here is the pup and the guy just pointed in that direction. So let's see. You just mentioned the houses look even different. Architecture and infrastructure looks completely different. There's no yeah. cobblestones, but oh, this is big either. to negotiate all of these mooring balls and I promise not to pull a face but ew, <laughs> this is gross this is super super gross ew and all these little mooring balls obviously eventually by the end of tonight we'll have a little boat on it ew loads of little fishing boats I saw this little airplane now for a couple of times coming across here not sure I think you might think of landing here but that Pitch is too high for him to come and land now. We left our last anchorage, Kefkin. We came around the corner, and this little island is here with a little harbor and everything. And it's called Kefkin Adasi. So, I was, we're going to go through. There's under the harbour wall and we saw some breakwaters over there as well there so we just need to steer clear of that so this is a very nicely protected little bay off this island so we've gone through the two markers Dashboard for today. You can see there's a hardly any wind. Absolutely zipper. But look at these ginormous swells going through here. I've been hand steering for a while now. It just makes it easier to control Sisu through these swells. Okay, so approaching our new anchorage around this area here we are now negotiating this river entering into the sea and it is just one big yellow ocean all the sea the river bed coming out into the sea and we have to watch the depth so carefully because it's 10 meters um, and it says we're in it 10 meter there uh, within a 20 meter to 10 meter range but the Navionics which is also used by Raymarine say we are currently in 60 meters of water but if we look at the depth it is 16 eh, eh, problem okay, our third anchorage in the Black Sea Karasu it's quite a big place Yes, they are busy drenching the entrance to this little harbour. I'll show you now. So there's a lot of sand 
going around here. We first of all took a chance when we got here to try and anchor inside that little harbour. Let me just get past my washing. We actually went inside there and we were very promptly approached by a little boat to say no, 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 not possible, not possible. There's a huge swell so we just wanted to protect them from the swells and there they are busy drenching right in the mouth of the little harbour. So that is what causes the water to look so horrible, it's like yellow. So no water maker for now. And they're actually scooping out huge amounts. And we've seen that guy go out to sea, he goes quite far to drop his load. mode just packed up so this whole big thing just have basically two two switches two little micro switches and when I open it up it was all wet and moist inside we've got a new one only way for me to make sure this happened to the doesn't happen to this one is to open it up void the warranty and seal it Hopefully everything is now okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's going the right arrows. <laughs> Always a bonus if it works like intended. Okay. Spell it irregularly, but they say it completely different. So that was not a bad place. I think that's a, and the anchorage there was very good. Brilliant um, anchorage. Yeah, very well protected from all sides. And even a little sailing club. Yeah, they there put a little sailing club. Two other or three other sailing boats. So <laughs> that was the most sailboats that we've seen since <laughs> we entered the Black Sea. Yeah. <coughs> There's just no sailing good. boats. Absolutely nothing. So. That's so it is for us. I think maybe higher up it might be other anchorages and things like that. But we've seen and experienced the Black Sea now. And the thing is, even if the wind, we discovered, even if the wind is no wind, the swells are still there because somewhere on the Black Sea there is a huge wind and it just creates this big yeah, swell. We wake up and it is. glass quiet well not completely quiet those two big actually now there's three they were going right through the night dredging I think this new harbor over there check all of these flies there's like hundreds of these flies they just everywhere so if we're going to open a window or a door, it's going to be busy inside here. So let's go. How awesome is those flat seas? So uh, it is a perfect opportunity to do some mending. A poor dinghy, a, a fender cover got massive injuries and I don't know why I decided a year and a half ago to pack my crochet needle <laughs> but anyway I thought this is gonna work great because it's definitely great. not socks right <laughs> no. <laughs> bed socks Bit 
treacherous when you come out. Not treacherous, it can be very unpredictable winds when you come out because of that little Cape Horn, or they call it a horn there around the corner, so we'll watch that. Because there is pretty rough winds predicted for the next two days and three days. Well, we're going to see if we can just tie onto this little fixed marina dock. We arrived and the marina manager was actually very friendly. Mm -hmm. no? They actually come and help us tie the dinghy on. Yeah. Very friendly means people and offered us a, a mask. <laughs> yeah, so very, and they told us where to go for a restaurant. So now we hunting a restaurant. Just look at this beautiful walkway. Tonight is our oh, tonight is our last night out, and this is most probably the highest uh, highest latitude that we will reach. So we're going to go to that pretty little town over there. Ooh, not sure you can see the pretty town, but we will go there. The weather is miserable. Yeah, the weather is is a good. Yep. Yeah, if you look there outside there, it looks like crinkle cut chips. Perfect food, perfect view, perfect companion. Awesome. Now we are walking the streets of something. What? Erelia. Look at the kittens. Look at the <laughs> Pietro is making for us much needed coffee or tea and we are on our way to the Caribbean I would dare say but yeah the little town is just waking up we also just woke up and today is the big day we're going to try and sail downwind from now on for the next year or 10 but <laughs> wishful thinking steel plants behind luckily the prevailing wind was not coming from that side the swells is telling us there is definitely some wind on that side just check these swells over here the wind is still blowing the wrong direction but the swells is telling us something else So we say downwind sailing and downwind sailing it is. It is 
almost 100% a dead run so I put the main up with a preventer because you will see just now why and well if you can see here look at these big swells it's coming directly on our beam just not not nice for the sails so the sails is not very very happy um, and then while we wait for that to happen again yeah you can see look and this one goes that one goes Yo. yeah the sails not and i also put this one because Catamaran has a very wide beam so I put a shackle, a quick carbiner on that one and then onto our mid cleat over there Pietro wanted us to sail because the wind looks good and it sure does look good and we are doing now also come on and we are also now doing a good speed um, and the wind is ooh. Yeah, it's, it's from the from our stern almost like a 100 dead run so we shifted just a little bit the course about 30 degrees and we're doing much better now much faster our vmg is much higher and you can see the apparent wind is somewhere there but the, but the main main thing is the main sail is happy even though that we do still hit the big the big swells just by changing the track a little bit you actually that was our track very very wacky and slamming and then the sails was slamming and then we changed course and we are doing actually quite good Petrus, hand steering! Yeah, this is the sea and Look who's hand steering Yeah, CCU has huge rudders, yeah. so it's pretty much, you can feel it on the steering. Yeah, you know exactly where to go. And look at this one, it's just going straight like that. Yeah, it's just going straight like that. Not too bad, not too shabby. That's Pietro hand steering, women sailing. Woohoo! <laughs> There's a couple of dolphins here for the first time they actually now staying with the boat. Look at that. Downwind sailing! All the way to the Caribbean! <laughs> it is so awesome! Downwind sailing is awesome! New concept for us though, but it's <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Approaching Cape Kim from the eastern side this time, where we're going to anchor tonight. And going out here was very, very calm seas, but you swells but today we've got a busy sea still with a big swell 8.6 knots yeah. 
9.1 Yo 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 So we just off the mainland on a little island And that was quite a hectic <laughs> 21 not to well. No We came in under the uh, And Peter fought the Genoa perfectly as we round the corner We had to dodge that There's actually a very narrow gap that we need to come in and then come around here Pietro filled the Genova perfectly we come in under the main we depower the main and oh, that says we switch on the anchor I think I uh, switch on the engines and yeah, so we, stay, we drop the sails and just there drop the anchor we were on the spot Copies of tea is ready. Pietro is taking us out, and this was the nice little harbor here. So the mainland is here, and they stop the mainland, and then this little island, then I built these walls. wind is still busy changing direction and when that happens everything is just crazy 17 knots of wind to actually put up a sail and, and I've tried changing direction a little bit to try and see if whether we can improve we know try more or less that direction if we can you can see the wind is now almost from our stern and um, I'm going to change now say even more into the wind so we're actually going to go away but to check our BMG it's going to change now significantly and if we put our main up we will have serious slamming of the sails and which can damage the track so we cannot at this moment do that yet but let's see if we can do a little bit more and, and work better now we have we will be on beam ridge we would still slam the sail quite a lot so let us go down quite a lot to the other side uh, uh, okay let's change So the wind is down a dead run. So we, let's see. If... <laughs> no, <laughs> still not going to work. Going to change. Twenty degrees more into the rain. There's rain over there. So we're going to set up our sails for this direction. As predicted, we got too close to the shore and the wind has died down completely we need to get back to there I was looking at the clouds and noticed that and there's another one some facts and myths about the black sea ancient mariners regarded the black sea as a very difficult body of water to navigate since the shores were inhabited by savages 
and the color of the water turned black during storms. In fact, the Black Sea happens to be the largest water body with a meromictic basin, which means the movement of water between the lower levels, which is the salt water that comes in through the Bosphorus, and the upper layers, which is the rainfall and the rivers coming into the sea, is a rare phenomenon to find in, that you won't find anywhere else in the world. According to a number of marine geologists, the Black Sea was a freshwater lake around 7,000 years ago, before a rise of water in the Mediterranean Sea caused the entry of salt water into the lake. Storms in the Black Sea is considered to be extremely hectic um, due to the strong winds that comes down from Russia, with breaking waves exceeding 18 meters. This is some of our last sails here in the, in the Black Sea. Our sails are reefed. The main is reefed to number one. It was an interesting sail here in the Black Sea. We are almost at the entrance of the Bosphorus. <laughs> Look at all these blue lines. There are ships going down and ships going up. And there's going to be like a three knot current in our favor. But we're going to try and sail it with our Genoa. We just dropped the main now. Judging by all those blue lines. Look how sweet that little baby is. guys just sail past us Pietro is making video up front and <laughs> the wind is is very good it's really really good for sailing and look at our speed actually very good well the current is very strong so 1.7 not as strong as when we came up but it is pretty cool to sail down the Bosphorus very cool and then you need to negotiate these things as well so it's not <laughs> and they are big and they are bloody all in the middle of the of the road Underneath there is just one restaurant on top of the other and they all try and sell you the menu. Many of those restaurants have seen our faces many years ago when we used to be a couple of towns but not playing. So it's so amazing to be here on Sisi. So our advice if you want to come here I think you leave um, Kalamish, uh, the Istanbul, Kalamish, or one of those marinas over there. And try to get to Kefkan, but if you cannot, there's a new anchorage place. But that were, the anchorages are just not nice. No, there's just no cool anchorage. Yeah, Kefkan, I think, is the, is the only place where you can have maybe a decent anchorage. We will go there tonight again and then. Irigli, Irigli, Iria, Irigli. If you want to search, it's Irigli. 
and it seems like the further north you go, um, or further east you go, uh, the places are further apart. The, the, the first stretch there was quite a couple of places, like all along the coastline you can see places, but it seems to get further and further apart the more east you go. This is our highest northern latitude, 41 degrees 16 minutes. So that was the highest point that we will go. And now we are returning back to the equator. <laughs> we're heading for the Caribbean, baby. Yeah, so we, it will take us a couple of months, so don't worry. It's <laughs> not that, that we will find the you will find us there in hurricane season it is it will take us about four months to reach there but from now on we're pointing that direction for us we could have maybe gone around the black sea but with the COVID restrictions we cannot go in and also with visas and stuff so i think COVID is the biggest problem uh, georgia don't allow anyone in hungary also not uh, Ukraine, very tricky to go there, but they also blocked at this moment. So we can only do the Turkish coastline. That, that was not ours. <laughs> we have a much slower one now. 